There we go. Hi. Okay. Here we are. Could we start? Yes, please do go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, Andrew, and thank you for your kindly suggest our team about appreciative inquiry. And Dr. Vipapan said to me that this method may suitable for keeping collection the feedback from housekeeper and staff. Um, mm. Before starting an introduction session, let me introduce about Queen Sassy Project and some action that we have done before. Okay, let me share screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 We have both sustainability committee and green committee that we have changed the name to green team. This is a summary of the responsibility of the green team. It's really a map to changing behavior. It takes time and we all know how difficult that can be. You can see that. And our first year objective is to segregate all waste and reduce waste to landfill with by 10%. And to make this happen, we have a first year action plan for piloting sustainable waste program, training and intense incentivizing staff and encouraging behavior change for everyone. Uh, what we have done before, we have laid the foundation with staff training sessions and a pilot program involving waste separation and plastic recycling in collaboration with a special group called Corsair. In the pipeline, there remains much to be done and we just asked for feedback from four housekeepers, gardeners and four staff last week. And we learned that the waste declaration is better than previously. Some parts did not cooperate with this rule, but the housekeeper always supports them. A uh, thing that challenged us for now is we need to save time to keep feedback because uh, if we need to get feedback from our organization, uh, just seven people takes a day to get their feedback and how to motivate and engagement people to join our activity. That's it for me. Okay. Okay. That's it for introduction from our side. So. All right. So is it my turn to, to talk? Yeah, about? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for showing me. Um, that's actually, there's a lot more that's gone into this than I'm aware of. So I think if we do proceed at some point, um, I would love to sit down and really dig into how everything came together and all those different steps that were shown on the first slide, because it looks like there's a lot of theory and a lot of practical um, ideas that have gone into the, the project. Uh, in any case, way back, it seems like in another life, uh, before we completely shut down for COVID, I met with members of your team as you know, to talk about um, whether appreciative inquiry could be a good participatory strategy to help you here. Um, now, I'm not sure in this meeting who was on any of those calls. Was Were you there um, in the beginning? Was anyone there on those calls? I don't think so. Um, hey. No, I don't think so, right? So let's back up then. So, so, um, so you know who I am, but I'll just refresh some information and you can tell me if I'm going into too much detail. So I am an organizational psychologist, uh, but way back before I did my PhD, um, I studied evidence-based interventions using community-based participatory research. And what that means is uh, at Oxford, I specifically worked with vulnerable communities, uh, communities who were dealing with complex issues, communities who might not like to talk uh, or might not trust researchers. And we developed uh, ways that we could build them into the research that we were doing so that we would get a win-win out of it. So they would get something in the end 
They didn't feel like we were using them and we would be able to solve the problem with their help, looking at them as the experts. So appreciative inquiry is one research modality that we use to help to do that, right? The idea is typical management research, which is what I mostly do. I do management research now, uh, but usually we say, here's a problem. Uh, for example, people aren't engaging or we want to reduce waste. And then we say, okay, what's causing the problem? Uh, and then we go in and we solve the problem. It's kind of a medical model, right? And that's not what appreciative inquiry is at all. So appreciative inquiry says, um, number one, because it's community-based, uh, we are not going to succeed uh, in solving a community problem without the community support, right? So first, that's one of our first assumptions. Number two, people and communities uh, themselves usually can take care of themselves. If we give them a few resources, if we uh, create solutions, or nudges that use their strengths, they can probably take care of themselves. They don't need us to come and tell them what to do, right? So what we want to do is we want to start with those assumptions by gathering feedback, uh, allowing um, any solution to be highly informed by the people that we work with. Uh, it's a five part process. Um, so that there's a, a five part model and please forgive me for not um, uh, giving you the, the slideshow. I'll just talk, talk my way through and if you'd like, I can send you some uh, PDFs later. But it's a five part process that starts with defining um, our problem, of course, or in this case, it's our inquiry. We're defining our affirmative topic for the inquiry. In this case, uh, I think that what, what we'd be asking is how can we um, use the, the strengths, the norms, the practices, the networks, the natural environment uh, at Sasin in these different work groups to promote participation, uh, to promote enthusiasm, right, to get people uh, on board and excited about doing this type of uh, work, right? So I'm thinking that that's what it is. So, so this is our uh, topic. Next, what we do is we um, try to uh, learn more about that. And so you've done some of your work already, talking to people and finding out, uh, you know, some people weren't participating. Do you know any feedback, any specific reasons or causes, barriers that people were encountering? Um, I, I think it can't calculate because it's a uh, COVID period and and less people come to Sasin. So mm -hmm. we we can keep the keep the feedback that less than we expect. So there's less feedback than expected, mm -hmm. uh, but you did find out that some people weren't really engaging. Is that right? Yeah. Mm. And were you able to get any feel for why those people might not? Did you? The people I have heard, for example, I have heard from many of the staff at Sasin, they just don't understand what are the SDGs, for example. They don't yeah. understand why we talk about sustainability. Because, uh, so they don't we, really care. because we just test just two floor mm -hmm. for now. We don't launch to our organization from now. Mm. Sure. Yeah. And I think this is a smart strategy to just do the initial test. But the reason I'm asking this question is even though you only did two floors, I suspect that there is some good feedback hiding um, out there uh, if we talk to the staff. And I was just wondering if any, any ideas came through uh, from the early discussions about why people didn't participate. Did you hear that people didn't understand? Maybe they didn't care. It takes too much time. Do we know anything yet? Uh, we we just don't train to staff, but we, we just train for staff who be a green team. So uh, the data is come from green team, but staff is know nothing from now. Okay, so the green team are the ones that were trained. The green uh -huh, team, uh -huh, yes. and they, they did it though? They followed through, they did everything, or they yeah. also didn't really participate? Uh, I, I think they're excited, but I think have, have some people uh, still 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 worry about okay. about take times to to uh, to join this project. Okay, so this is great. This this is actually good because we're this is the phase we call the discovery phase of appreciative inquiry. And discovery is just where we learn. So it starts out with us as the researchers learning. I would learn all about what you've done. I'd learn every person that was participating, exactly what you did, what your goals were. So the discovery phase is just a lot of um, collecting information. It won't necessarily take too long, um, but what we want to do is really, really understand what's happened on the ground, okay? 
and uh, what those problems were. So this is just some early uh, discussions with people, a few phone calls, maybe a couple of meetings, not too much yet. Uh, the next phase that we move on to with appreciative inquiry is the dream phase. And it sounds like in the dream phase, maybe everything has not happened yet that needs to happen. This is the phase where we get people excited. We want them to all have the same vision. If people are not excited about one thing or another thing, that's where we get to try to fix it, right? We want to, okay, am I back? Hi, hello. <laughs> okay, there. Yeah, so we want to try to get people on the same page um, with the same ideas. So that's going to require some focus groups and some discussions. Now, normally, if I'm doing appreciative inquiry with the community, usually I'll do one-on-one -on -one, uh, meetings in the beginning, just to try to get people to give their unfiltered uh, opinions. And we ask them, instead of starting with the problems, we actually start with what do they like? So what do they like about this? What has been going well? Um, what are they excited about? Uh, how does this match onto their values? And then instead of asking questions like, what, what are the problems? We say, you know, what's the best version of this you can imagine, right? The best possible version of this program or Sasin in general, whatever it is, however they see this together. And how could we achieve that? So we frame the questions not as problems in the beginning. We frame mm -hmm. them as um, how could we achieve this vision, this, this incredible opportunity that we have? And usually people will tell you the problems. Right. They'll tell you the problems, but they don't tell you the problem saying we need to fix this. They say, well, we need to make this better. We need to make sure people can do this thing or get this resource. So once we start asking that question at the very end, we will ask some problem questions. At the very end, we'll ask some problem questions. So was this a problem? What do you need, et cetera? But it's really about giving people what they need, et cetera. So after we've talked to a few people and we start hearing the same stories over and over, then what we want to do is bring people together make sure that we all, all understand each other. We tell them this is the summary of what we learned. These are the steps we think we should take. Here's how we're gonna get to the next stage. If they all agree as a community at that point, research shows they're very, very likely to implement exactly as we discussed, and they will usually lead the change because it's their program at that point, right? It's their program, we listen to their advice, we've changed it, we've amended it. So that's the next phase. So we do the, the dream phase at that point, right? We get on the same page and then we actually will send it out so then we'll actually do the implementation with the revised um, adjustment. We'll collect some information on problems, et cetera, that are happening through more interviews uh, periodically. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll monitor uh, the, the scale up. So it's a fairly simple methodology, but the, the orientation is very uh, goal focused, very vision focused, and it involves a lot of talking with people and then adjusting things behind the scenes. Um, so pretty simple. Um, I think I've scaled it down for our conversation. Do you have any initial thoughts about the, the, the way that we would approach it if we did this? Mm, <laughs> no, it, no, it sounds, it sounds uh, pretty rigorous and, and, and logical to me. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, it, it sounds also a lot like our process we go through for um, you know, for our startups, uh, yeah. very, very, very similar sort of uh, dr drilling down, and and as you say, sort of standing it on its head, starting with starting with, with the positives. I like that a lot. Uh, so people aren't defensive; they're 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 with you to begin with, right? I like that. Yeah. It's a, a nice technique. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, yeah. I think I think I I could see this. I could see an application. Sure. Great. Well, I mean, I can too. And, and I know that you were all using some of that startup methodology um, from the start, I think, in your project as well, right? That's what I heard. So it's another reason yeah. I thought this fits really well at this point. Um, yes, it, hmm? it seems Good. to, yes. Well, what we would do next then, I think, is have maybe um, a smaller set of uh, meetings where we just um, catch me up on everything first, because I'm the first person, I guess, the first problem uh, or opportunity here is making sure that I have all the information that I need. Uh, once I kind of feel like I'm fully up to speed, what we would want to do is develop a timeline um, and, a, and a number, you know, how many interviews do we think that we need? Would they be groups? Would they not? Would they be in Thai, uh, be in English, uh, et cetera? And then our scale, our scaling up timeline as well. Um, throughout this process, the goal is to involve our participants as much as they want to be involved and as much as they can. That means if we uh, come up with a solution, it's better to have the participants uh, participants means the other people, right? The people who are not us, anyone, anyone else that we're working with. 
if they can give the message, if they can communicate to their groups, et cetera, we want to make sure they can do it. Yeah. But but the first interview, uh, my our team yeah. interview already. Yeah. So it's developed to develop to uh build a stick a sticker or or more bin mm. or or something that that we use in experiment phase. Yep. I, I, this I, is I, the one you messaged me about, or someone messaged me about this a few months ago. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. So, so that's I fantastic. It's not. It's not a, a first interview that you 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 do. It's not first interview. So, uh, staff, 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 uh, has interviewed before. Yes, so I heard this and I knew this was going to be happening and that's completely fine because as Alex mentioned, this is, you're following a similar methodology already. So this means that what we would explain, you know, as a researcher, I would just explain that similar work had already been done and we formally instituted the appreciative inquiry uh, framework at this stage, building off of what you've done previously. And that's completely normal. Oftentimes when we start appreciative inquiry, they bring in a consultant from the outside. Uh, people often are willing to tell the consultant all the dirty secrets. So I'll kind of act as that, as that role, um, you know, so I think that we're, we're good. We're good to do that. Um, what I would want to do is just sit down with you, for example, or with whomever else and just ask every single step that's happened. I want to go back to that first slide and understand everything that you've done, um, all the people that were involved, the numbers of people on the ground, and also what your vision is, you know, for the future. If this worked out well, then do we go to another level of deployment? Are we doing two more floors, all the floors? You know, everyone at that point, usually uh, in these types of, of uh, implementation projects, we're also going to need to adapt a little bit to the different groups. So for example, the faculty might not be as easy to work with uh, to get them to follow through with certain things. So we might need to adapt our strategy a little bit for them. So we might have to talk to them uh, or, or other groups of people. Yeah, so, so I think we just wanna create our timeline first, make sure I have all the information and then we can very quickly build a new set of interviews. Uh, some something that I worry about is uh, staff may may think that they use a the time for interview about this project many times. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, um, what what have they told you already? Hmm? Have they told you that they are sick of talking about it, or they are wasting their time, or? Um. Because uh, a feedback that that we got last week mm. we interviewed the same people that we first interviewed with that mm. and 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 we kleng jai ah คุณเล็กคุณเล็กแฟนไหนคะคือเหมือนกับว่าไปเอาเวลาเค้ามาUh, because they don't have time to answer questions. Is that it? Is that what you're saying, Tom? คือคือเขาเขาเขาไม่ได้บอกว่าว่าว่ากวนน่ะค่ะแต่ว่าหมายถึงว่าเราอ่ะสัมภาษณ์เขาไปสองรอบแล้วสําหรับคนที่เราท
I'll want to know everyone you talked to already. One thing we're looking for is people who have very passionate ideas, good or bad, and people who have the ability to communicate to others. So team leaders, uh, people that other people respect. If we can identify some of those, we might talk to them multiple times. But if, um, if it's just an average person and they just had some average ideas, it might not. Okay, I see, thank you. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Ajahn, do you will lead yourself? Oh. Sure, sure. It depends, right? So, so for example, when I worked in Qatar, um, I ran a lot of the focus groups myself. But anytime I was doing something public, I, I had a local, a Qatari speaking for me. Um, I never showed my face in public because I wanted the message to be owned uh, by the Qatari people. So I think it just depends, right? I can be there and I can run the focus groups uh, with the assistance of translation or the interviews. I can also train someone uh, to do it in the way that we would want uh, and be an observer or not be present at all. So it depends on how we can reduce the bring jai and how we can get people to be the most honest. Good. Well, it sounds like you got your sensitivity antennae on very well, thanks. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah, we want to be effective. So whatever it takes to be effective, that's what we want. Excellent. Good. That's encouraging. Yeah. So 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 what is the very next step is to get you read in. That's it, right? Okay. That's it. Yep. The very next step would be to get me oriented. Um, I, I'd like to understand everything I saw in those slides, and I'll just have a lot of questions for you. I'll do the reading, whatever I need to do on my own. That's fine. And then let's just set a couple of planning meetings uh, to see if we can get our vision straight, and then we'll start. Uh, collecting yeah people and inviting them to participate. Sure, I think I think it'd be very helpful. So, so, so you and and uh, Kentong Kunasi I get together on on timing then, and yep. then also any resources you might need in terms of translation or anything else. Let's uh, let's get that down on on paper, and then we can and we can get get this thing rolling. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward. This is going to be really great. Um, one other thing just to keep in mind as we go forward, those those questions and feedback that you just barely gave, these are wonderful. So any, uh, again, this is a positive research methodology, but we need to be practical as well. So anything you are worried about, please make sure you bring those to that first meeting and we will keep those things in mind as we develop our strategy. Excellent. Mac, did you, did you have something you wanted to say? I saw you. Yeah, I was well, I was just wondering if I could be kind of privy to these contextualization meetings, since then it could be like two birds with one stone and I could like learn more about about the, the green team and um, just that and greening in general. Um, yeah, I, can I lurk in your meetings? <laughs> you cannot not be part of it. How's that? <laughs> perfect. Okay. Right, you're perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Who's working on campus, by the way, because I'm, I'm on campus about half of the week every week is anyone else there or will these be remote we're starting to trickle back in we haven't we, haven't, we need to set up a schedule and so we know where we are on this but right now right now it's catch as catch can i'm afraid no problem that's fine great so um so let's just uh do that i'll just look for an email from you or we can or we can talk about um scheduling however you'd like to do it and we'll, we'll plan it from there super drew great introduction thank you very much well thank you thank you for inviting me i'm happy to be back involved good all right. Is that it? Anything else? That's it, I guess. Anything else? Okay. Looking forward then. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.